On June 27, 2008, Pixar, Disney Pixar, released WALL-E to the world. WALL-E, a film made by this wonderful, wonderful man, Andrew Staten, was an immediate box office hit with audiences worldwide full of fun and memorable characters. Now, if you remember watching WALL-E, side note, if you haven't seen it, you should definitely go watch it. I can confirm it still holds up today. You probably have fond memories of some of the main cast. Eva, Otto, Captain, and of course the main man himself, Wally. Now, when little five-year-old me first watched Wally, I too was drawn to these wonderful characters. However, there was one character that really stood out to barely conscious Leviathan. A character who, while only having a total of... That can't be right, can it? Just a few seconds? Huh? I mean, and there was that one Bernie short that came out, I guess. I don't know, something about this character's struggle to weld that damn lamppost in really resonated with me, I guess. This character, of course, is the man, the myth, the legend, the one, the only, Bernie. Now, the first step was obviously to find a high-quality 3D model of Bernie to 3D print, and looks like we have one right here. Yeah, this looks perfect. Now we have to download it and import it into Fusion 360 on my fancy schmancy new computer. And I've already run into an issue. You see, my plan was originally to import a 3D model and then separate it into its individual chunks and have those 3D printed, leaving room for the servos and Arduino and stuff like that. Uh, however, this is just one big block, and I have no idea how to separate this. I mean, it's entirely possible. You could do that in Fusion 360. I just, I just don't know how to do that, so looks like we're gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. Here's a neat little feature of Tinkercad I didn't know, which is why it's peak. You can grab these things themselves, which are like servo motor blocks, and then group it together with your main block, and then it just makes a hole that's the perfect size for your servo motor. So that way when you 3D print it, all you gotta do is just click it into place. And you could even do the same thing with components, make sure it's all perfectly sized when it gets to the 3D printing. And with the 3D modeling all done, there's only one very important step left to do. As always, we have to head over to PCBWay.com to get the files manufactured. Speaking of PCBWay, the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay offers PCB manufacturing, PCB assembly, RPC rigid flex, whatever that is, CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, PCB design, PCB assembly, OEM, all that good stuff, and even an entire module store. So check them out at PCBWay.com. And just like that, our 3D prints have arrived. Look at all these beautiful 3 these beautiful 3D prints that came. Obviously this is the head. We also have the torso with our beautiful, beautiful Leviathan Engineering logo on it. The arm, the other arm, little pedestal thing, two gas cans, these things right here on Wally. -E. And all the electronics. PCB we also sent us those, so again, massive thanks to them. And here it is all put together. Wow, very nice, yes? Beautiful. And we're not even 30 seconds in, and I'm already facing a problem. You see, I made these holes the perfect size for the servo motors, correct? Wrong! It turns out, when you 3D print things, you're supposed to give them more than 0.1 millimeters of tolerance. And frankly, I'm not gonna re-3D print these, so it looks like the only thing we can do, really... Perfect fit. First try. See, now it all fits together, and now the next thing to do is just get it painted, which is... Of course! Of course. 
We got some gray for the gray parts of him, black obviously, and some hot rod red. Do you like my little painting setup? I'm, pr I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's, it's good because I don't know about you, I'm not a big fan of spray painting permanently on concrete. And here we have the finished paints, which as you can see, looks suboptimal. So uh, I think what we're gonna have to do is go over the details and clean it up with a Sharpie. And honestly, this works way better than paints. So in hindsight, I probably should have just done this to begin with, but you know, I guess hindsight is 2020. 2020, hindsight is 2020, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's not looking, that's not looking great. I'll, I'll, uh, here we have it. This, this is, yeah, we made a mistake, but what can you do? I accept PCBWay actually was kind enough to include a secondary head, which means all we got to do is redo it with Sharpie this time. Add those little details that I mentioned earlier. Sorry about the lighting change. Um, here's a quick tip for all you mechatronics engineers out there. When you first get a servo, run a quick code that sets the position to zero. That way when you screw on like the plastic bit, it's always at position zero and then you can program it accordingly. So this is just set to position. That, that's not right. Good thing about this though, is I just got a replacement servo some, somewhere here. Nope, not that one. Uh, there we go, perfect. So this is a 360 degree servo. This is a 180 degree servo. 360 degree servo is just spin round and round. And now when we run the code, this should set to position zero, perfect. And then now we can screw in the plastic bit and know that during programming, whenever we tell it to go to position zero, we know that it will go flat. Now I'm actually thinking smart, and before I glue on the head, I'm gonna put the screen in first, that way I don't have to try to maneuver the screen in with it already on the body, but first and foremost, <sighs> always important. And here we have the full guy. Isn't he adorable? All we gotta do is wire up the screen, which I should have done. Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm just gonna rip this out and try again. I tried thinking smart and planning ahead, but apparently I should have wired it as well beforehand. Yeah, I guess you live and you learn, I guess. I'm just gonna skim through the programming and the wiring. Um, if you're actually interested in making this for yourself, I'll drop those down in the description below. But usually this is where one clicks off, so we're just gonna skim through this really, really quickly. And now, obviously, we tape on, glue on the two little gas burners and plug it right in. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, you have to make a common ground, otherwise this thing would have legitimately exploded. Just a little engineering tip for you. You have to have your power and Arduino have common ground. Checking around, looking around. However... <laughs> he kind of freaks out a little bit if there's a really loud noise. Then he'll go back to doing what he was doing. And then he'll freak out. It's actually really funny.